Welcome back everyone and welcome to another self-defense lesson. Today's lesson we are going to focus on a two-hand wrist grab and by that I mean one hand on each wrist. So the difference between a two-hand wrist grab in regards to how I have to approach this compared to a single-hand wrist grab is I don't have a hand free. When it comes to the single-hand wrist grabs I have the hand free, I can easily do my strikes, I can easily disengage the wrist and it's a lot easier for me to back out. When it comes to a two-hand wrist grab both my hands are occupied. Now the benefit to this is that both my attacker's hands are also occupied and once again we're in a situation that in order for her to strike or pull a weapon she's going to have to release one of those hands and as soon as she does then I can follow up with my strike, break the other hand and we get out. But because we're starting off with two hands on, you know, essentially we're starting with two hands attacking me it's very difficult for me to be able to strike and do whatever I need to do with my hands initially. So to start on this, my main focus is going to be focusing on her legs. Now there are a few kicks and strikes that I can do. Again, I'm not trying to necessarily break anything or severely damage anything. I'm merely trying to put enough pain to distract this person so that while she's focused on the pain down below, I can disengage her wrists up above and get out. Ideally, if I can attack the legs and the wrists as close together as possible, it allows me to get out a lot quicker. So a few strikes that you can do, obviously I can do the stomp again on top of the foot. Don't expect that to do a ton of damage, but it can be painful. Otherwise, I can also aim to stomp a little bit higher and aim for the ankle. You can easily do a soccer kick, which again is like you're kicking a soccer ball. I'm aiming for the inside of the shin. It may hurt your foot a little bit, but again, I'm just trying to put a little bit of pain on this person to keep them distracted. Otherwise, depending on how they're standing, if they have one leg that's slightly back, I can easily do a front kick to the inside of the thigh, or if their foot's kind of turned out a little bit, I can do a kick to the inside of the calf. Now, again, all of those aren't going to do severe amounts of damage, but they are going to put enough pain on the person that for a split second, she's going to focus on below, which allows me to focus on my hand. So, let's pretend you've done one of those kicks. What do we do with our hands now? Now, a strong person is going to try and keep your hands as center as possible. If I try and bring my hands out, they're going to try and keep them in. Now, I can use that to my advantage because one of the strikes that we did when it came to a single hand wrist grab is again, I take my open palm and I strike for the wrist as I pull my hand back. Now, I could do a strike very similar to that, but you have to kind of play around with this person's energy and understand how they're trying to hold you in place. So, if I understand that they're not allowing me to move my hands out, and they're going to try and force my hands back in, I can use that to my advantage. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to slowly start bringing my arms out until I feel her starting to resist. As soon as I feel that resistance, I'm going to essentially come in as if I'm clapping my hands. Only, I'm not going to clap them, I'm going to use the palm of the one and strike for the wrists on the other. So I'm going to do this, I feel her resistance of trying to push back in, so I'm going to give in to that energy, which in turn allows my power to go up a lot more. And I'm going to come all the way across, strike the far wrist, as I pull that hand out. Now, the hand that did the striking may still have a wrist grab on it, that's fine, because either way I should have this hand free, I can follow up with a second strike. If she's still holding on to this hand, then you go right to now a single hand wrist grab. I can break that hand off, and again I can disengage. Otherwise, if both come off, that works even better. So again, I come out, as soon as I feel that resistance, I come across, I pull both hands free. I can do a counter strike if I need to, I can throw another kick if I need to, and then we disengage. So that's one option. The second option, and the one that takes a little bit more thinking and a little bit more technique rather than just a sudden movement, is again, I throw an initial distraction kick. Now, the difference is, I'm going to take my opposite hand and I'm going to try and grab her far wrist. Now, you may be able to do this by simply just doing a quick fast motion and trying to grab the wrist as she holds on. If not, again, play around with their reaction and understand that when I try and move my hands out, they're going to try and keep your hands together. So if you're struggling to grab that wrist, just move your arms out a little bit. When you feel that pressure, come in and grab the wrist. Now, the second step to this is I'm going to step and turn sideways back into that blading motion. The same time that I'm doing this blading motion, I want to take my elbow and touch it next to her elbow. Because once again, if we talk about the idea of breaking through the, the grips with the fingers, is once I turn that hand, it's very easy for me to pull that wrist out. If I add that while also going elbow to elbow, you can already see how awkward it is for her arm by how she's starting to turn her shoulder and her elbow. So this motion combined with my body turning allows for me to easily break that hand free. But again, because it's two hands, I can't just simply step to the side. So I have to get control of that wrist. Now I can step and turn. Now it's important that I keep a firm grip on this wrist, so I want to Step, go elbow to elbow, and just tuck that hand to your armpit. 
Don't try and pull the arm out. Just simply tuck as fast as you can in the arm to your armpit. Now I can come up again with a second strike. I no longer need to hold on to this arm unless I'm trying to restrain this person. Because again, if I don't need to take this a step further, I'm not going to. I've got my hands free. I can do my strike. I can push the person away if I need to. I can push the arm down if I need to. If I feel the need to throw in another kick, I can. But otherwise, once again, I disengage. So again, all together, I can bring those arms out a little bit. But either way, I'm catching the wrist, stepping elbow to elbow. And again, I tuck that arm to my armpit in a fast, quick motion. Do my counter strike, and again, I disengage. So in review for those two real quick, bring my arms out, strike. If I don't get this hand free, then I can break off the other hand. Otherwise, once again, I'm free. Grab the wrist, elbow to elbow, tuck that arm, strike, and disengage. Just take note and understand that just because both my hands are occupied doesn't mean that I'm in a lot of trouble here. Just focus on what else you need to do first. I should be able to sit here, throw a couple kicks, and break those wrists up. Now, a last option, let's just say that this isn't working, I can't get to the side, my kicks aren't really doing anything, you can do a counter grab. Now, once again, understand that once I engage now in any sort of counter grab, that I am now in turn tying myself closer to this person. So understand that once you do this, this person now has an opportunity to take this a step farther. So when you are deciding to do a counter grab, do the damage that you need to do and get out quick. You don't want to get yourself into a worse position. For this particular counter grab, I'm going to go palm up and we call this outside in. I'm going to come palm up and grab underneath the wrist as if we're just holding on to each other's wrists here. Once again, turn your thumbs outward, grab the wrist from underneath. All I'm going to do now is quickly pull in. Now once, again, I'm not trying to pull this person all the way through me, I'm merely just trying to pull the person close enough and catch them off guard. And if I do this right, they should be in range of, now I bring up my knee, I can do a knee strike to the lower groin or lower abdomen. Either way, this person's gonna be in a lot of pain after this. Again, I grab the wrist, I pull, and I throw a knee at the same time. Realistically, this person should let go immediately to protect themselves. When that is the case, I can clap the ears if I need to, stun them a little bit. If they're still back down, I can do a heel palm strike if I need to. I've done the one knee. If I wanted to grab the head and throw a couple other knees, I could. Otherwise, I'm disengaging. And it's a crucial here, especially when you're in this position, that I do the damage and I get out. Because from this position, it's very easy for her to engage in a takedown, for her to grab me, for her to strike me. She's a lot closer than when she was simply just grabbing my wrist. So when you're doing this move, do the damage and back out immediately. So those are three different options that you have for a two-hand wrist grab and understand that just because I don't have my hands available doesn't mean that there still isn't a way out. Just shift your focus on what's being attacked and just find other alternatives to keep this person distracted while you simply work the techniques to get your wrist free. So thank you again and we'll catch you all next time.